My name is Andy Arnold and I practice law in Greenville and I want to spend a couple minutes talking about tort reform. We all hear uh, politicians uh, on one side or the other um, either advocate or oppose tort reform and some of us are probably a little bit confused one exactly what they're talking about and, and, and what the issue means for us uh, and our loved ones. The most prevalent debate uh, in, health, uh, in tort reform is caps, having caps on damages. And for a lot of us that appeals to us because, you know what, we don't like jackpot justice. We don't like the notion of somebody getting rich uh, just because uh, they've, they've been injured. We want them to get the compensation they deserve, but we feel like we don't want them to be unjustly enriched. Um, but on the other hand, one of the things we don't understand about capping these damages is essentially what you're doing by capping what someone can recover. When you're taking the power away from a jury, uh, the Seventh Amendment guarantees a trial by jury. People like you and I sit on juries and we make decisions. It's the most democratic way of making decisions uh, that exist under our Constitution and our form of government. Another thing that I think people don't realize in, uh, when we're talking about caps is when you cap damages that someone receives, you're shifting responsibility uh, for the reckless behavior of someone else. The other thing people don't understand is that when someone gets uh, a recovery. Let's say 300 grand. Take 300 grand, which is a is a is a cap in one one uh, statute in South Carolina. Not all that money goes to the victim of that reckless behavior. Uh, the attorney will take their fee. But another thing people don't realize is that a lot of that money will go to uh, health care providers. I just settled a case uh, involving $150,000 of medical bills. Uh, Greenville Hospital System wasn't going to get paid because the person injured didn't have insurance and didn't have the means to pay that bill. If we had not brought an action and made the person who was responsible for causing that uh, injury, those medical bills would have never been paid and that cost would have been shifted to the rest of us. And so when you put caps on damages, what you're doing is you're shifting the cost to the rest of us. When the person who causes the harm by their recklessness should be the person responsible, not just for part of the harm they've caused, but for all the harm they caused. And there's no better uh, person or persons to make that determination than uh, our fellow citizens impaneled on a, um, on a jury.